You're on. Hi, this is Stu Miniman with Wikibon here at SNW. Uh, here with Silicon Angle, I've pushed John Furrier over to the third seat uh, for this segment. So uh, we've got Josh Goldstein, VP of Marketing from Certus. So going to talk a little bit about cloud storage and how they all fit together. Thanks for joining us, Josh. Thank you, Stu. Good Great. to be here. So, so here at SNW, we're talking about innovation. We're talking about new ways of taking uh, you know, what was harder to do and more expensive to do and making them easier and making things more efficient today. And uh, I think, you know, for, from a cloud standpoint, uh, you know, Certus is helping to do that. So can you give us a little bit of background as to who Certus is and what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Certus as a company uh, is helping people solve the challenge of how to connect their enterprise into cloud storage and make use of it as a resource without having to learn how to do everything all over again. So with our technology, uh, with our products, they're able to connect to the cloud as if it were just another local storage array and then use the infinite resource of the cloud and gain all kinds of capabilities in terms of improved backup and okay. disaster recovery. Josh, and you say connect to the cloud. Give, give us a couple examples. Who can I connect to using your technology? Uh, you can connect to Amazon S3. You yep. can connect to AT&T Synaptic Storage as a Service. Yep. You can connect to any EMC Atmos-based provider, whether that's public or private. Okay. So. So, so, so I've heard of sometimes you're called a gateway to the cloud. That's exactly right. Um, but, but, but you're more than just, just a gateway. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of your box and what you do locally? Sure. So gateway kind of refers to the, the concept of being able to translate um, normal storage protocols like iSCSI, NFS, and SIFS into things that are the, the vendor-specific APIs that the cloud providers operate with. We do much more than that. Um, so what we provide is a standard storage experience, meaning okay. that you have capabilities like thin provisioning, you have capabilities like space-efficient snapshots, uh, volume management, all the things that you expect out of a normal storage system, we're mapping on top of the cloud, even though those capabilities don't natively exist in the cloud. Okay, so, so when you think about the, the, those kind of cloud providers, you would sometimes line to business, grabbing a credit card, and going out to pay to use Amazon. This is, you know, looks and acts much more like a traditional sta standard storage environment, and your storage guy will understand how to use it, right? Storage guy will innately understand how to use it, so he can get up and running in about a half an hour, and he's using the cloud, but the experience is if he was using local storage. Wow, so half an hour as opposed to, you know, the, the weeks or months that That's it would right. take for a traditional Yeah, there's no more, no more provisioning nightmares, no more cabling all the disk drives and shelving them up and oh, all that oh, stuff. Okay, and, you know, we, we, one of the themes we've been talking about, John, is about cloud washing, and, you know, what what is cloud and what isn't cloud? And there, there's without a doubt, you plug into the cloud and you're an enabler for, for moving to, to the cloud. Yeah, I think in our case, we're not cloud washing at all. We're, yeah. we're really in there um, with what I kind of think is the true cloud. So Josh, I mean, I got I to kind of ask. I mean, obviously, you guys are heavily funded from Silicon, uh, Silicon Valley, VCs, NEA, Bessemer, um, the big guns, you know, Shasta. So, you know, what's, what do they see in you guys? When you go, when you can talk to those guys, do you, I mean, it's hard, you know, those guys are good names. What's the value proposition? What's the game changing? vision for you guys. And now see backup, archival mm -hmm. storage is great, it's clouds early. What's the what's the dream that they're buying into? Right. Well so the so with us there's a couple things. So one is they talk to enterprise customers and they're in a tremendous amount of pain with respect to their storage environments. It's it takes up too much space, it's too costly, it's too hard to back it up and we help with all of those things. Um, but fundamentally, I think you have to believe in the long term that companies are going to want to leverage cloud technology in a much bigger way than what they're able to do today. Um, we're not really like about... What? Like what? Well, we're not about backup to the cloud. You can certainly do that through our product. Yeah. We're really about enabling primary storage in the cloud where you don't have to do backup anymore. Right. So, 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 so we're talking about enterprise usage for your technology. Exactly. Right. And, and could you tell us, maybe walk us through a couple of use cases that you're seeing uh, from your customers today? Sure. You bet. Um, actually, one of our customers will be here at SNW talking tomorrow okay. um, that's uh, David Jones from Alexa Pharmaceuticals will okay. be talking about exactly he's, give, he's giving a session yeah he's giving a session at uh, 10 30 tomorrow morning okay um, but use cases for our stuff so you see people doing a lot of things with their file shares yep. um, where that would go to the cloud um, a lot of people doing their enterprise content management applications where the content repositories are now actually living in the cloud and that's a high growth area for their storage um, some people are doing server logging um, where they're keeping the, the histories of their logs out in the cloud um, and uh, any kind of archiving app makes perfect sense. So if you're running Enterprise Vault and you're doing email and file archiving, that's that's an ideal use case as well. Great, good, good to hear a customer that said, one of the things we've, we found a little bit lacking at this show is a lot of vendors talking about technology. We like that customers talking about their real world environment. So you know, kudos to you guys for bringing in a, 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 an end user. Oh, that, thanks. That, that's using How stuff. many customers do you guys have? Do you guys talk about that? We can't talk dozens, about that. Dozens, hundreds, yeah, I single can't. digits, my, my millions? C, my CEO so, so, so will uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I start so talking I, I about that. Let, you're in the product side. 
you're on the product <laughs> side, right? So you're on the product. I am on the product. So side. on the roadmap, talk about the roadmap. I mean, without giving any details. I mean, obviously you don't want to be known as backup, and backups out there for everyone to ask. That's a standard operating kind of anti up to mm-hmm. do that, right? The primary storage is a hard nut to crack in the cloud. I mean, it's not trivial, right? I Correct. Mean, yeah. I mean, Zeta tried to do that. Others tried to do primary backup. What makes you think you can pull it off? Um, well, I think you got to look at the problem a little bit differently. So one of the, the key things that we're doing that, that really other people hadn't brought to the table before is the, the technology heritage in the company comes from the WAN optimization space. And that's a really critical component for two reasons. One is getting the performance you need in order to make this all work the way it's supposed to work and give you the experience you expect. The other one is it's the only way you can make the economics work. So WAN optimization technology has nice side effects in terms of reducing the amount of storage you're putting in with the cloud provider um, and reducing the amount of data that you're transferring back and forth. So that changes the economic game quite a bit. Um, The other thing that's pretty different is we're not the guys operating the back end of the cloud. So some of the companies you were mentioning, they were trying to get your data in, but then they're guys operating the back end as well. We're relying on best of breed providers who can do that and do it at a scale that Certus as a a young company wouldn't be able to ever achieve. So so you're not trying trying to take the, the, the lunch from anyone else. I mean, or <laughs> you're maybe nibble at some breakfast, but you're not trying to eat someone else's lunch, like an EMC maybe, or someone else. Will you? Well, I, I, mean, well I, I mean, I think it's... It, it, it's, it's the age of co-opetition, I think. So so yeah, you partner yeah. with the Atmos side, but you're competitive to the traditional on-site storage array. Yeah, I think that's a fair way to look at it. So customers who are buying and deploying our technology are definitely making a choice between expanding or replacing existing on-site storage arrays versus moving some of that data out to the cloud. So yeah. that's Great, and, and anything you can talk is, so we can't talk numbers, but, you know, Generally, you know, what does the storage community think of you and how are customers uh, finding Certus? We, we've had a tremendous response. So the company came out of stealth mode in late September yep. of 2010. Um, since then, the, the response has been really fantastic. So the, the, our ability to, you know, to communicate with customers, get evaluation systems out into the field, win deals has really gone uh, beyond our expectations. Okay, great. And, uh, you know, so you talked about kind of the, the cloud hostings. What about partners? How are you going to market these days? Um, so we go to market two different ways. So for selling our own product, it's a completely 100% channel model, right. and so we have uh, traditional storage, bars, and resellers. Um, we have networking resellers, so for example, we have we have some guys who have been big Cisco shops and yep. have thought about bringing storage on, but doing it in kind of a, a traditional way didn't make a lot of sense to them. They had to learn too many new things, and yep. the cloud is a lot easier to understand and take advantage of with our products, so that's worked out very well for us. Um, and then we also have very strong partnerships with the providers themselves, so we get a lot of recommendations, a lot of pull into, into end-user deals coming from the cloud provider side. Okay, and, and I guess uh, from a pricing standpoint, working with the providers, is it still kind of the traditional buy, buy a technology or you know, a lot of the clouds are kind of pay as you grow uh, type thing. So, so how does that work out with you guys? So in our case, you're buying our appliance yep. and deploying it. So that's kind of your one-time fee. Yep. And then the recurring fees are t- to the cloud provider. So right. there aren't any for using our product. Yeah, but, but still I have to think from an economic standpoint, you're, you're you know, very competitive with kind of a traditional storage array. Oh, it's more than competitive with yeah. the traditional storage, right? People are seeing uh, TCO, you know, we, we have a very extensive TCO model we work through with end users okay. and they see paybacks that come within a matter of months. Excellent. So talk, right. talk about what's going on at the show here. I mean, honestly, um, I, I know I have two questions, but first one is, um, you guys are a cutting edge startup. You recently funded, this isn't kind of an existing industry show. What's different here or could be different? I mean, we were talking earlier in our last session that some of the big vendors, some of them got caught flat footed with the whole how fast the cloud was approaching and mm-hmm. you know it's all speeds and feeds but you know that people are looking for that innovation edge uh, what are you seeing here at SNW that uh, catches your eye that says, hey, that's a that's a, a mega trend or that's a trend that's huh. emerging? Uh, well, the one that, uh, it's funny, I was here with my, my product manager and we were both commenting on it is it seems that uh, this is the year of flash, um, which <laughs> it seems like maybe that was, you know, happened in the last few years, but there's, there's a tremendous amount of technology here at the show that has to do with, uh, you know, flash drives, flash PCI cards, integrating flash into your yeah. storage well, controller. Well, th- th- there's flash in your box, right? Th- there is flash in our box. <laughs> yeah, so uh, absolutely. So. Everybody's got flash everywhere. Yep. So so Flash is anti, anti-up table stakes for storage? I think it's getting that way. I mean, I don't think it's there yet, but it's certainly the, you know, it's, it's kind of coming from the bottom up, right? The controller technology is mm-hmm. improving, the cost points are coming down, and everybody's starting to build it in and figure out how to make better use of it. So I think, you know, you fast forward a couple of years, it'll definitely be it. So what's the culture of your company? You mentioned that you come from the WAN optimization background. Also, mm-hmm. that's a, that's a, a network-based phenomenon that's important with cloud stuff. Um, is the company culture... Uh, better yet, you guys obviously are hiring, you're growing. What's the kind of people you're looking for in the product and engineering group? Is there a skill set? Is there a unique edge to you guys that's different? 
Um, I, I don't know if I would say that. I think you know all technology companies are trying to hire aggressive mm -hmm. A players. And you're in Silicon years. Valley, so it's hard, right? It, it is. Um, so the things we look for are, you know, we, we want high IQ, guys who understand startup culture and are willing to work hard, um, and then come from good backgrounds where they've, you know, they've developed this type of technology in the past. So some of the stuff we're doing, nobody's developed in the past, but if you have certain types of networking or storage or protocol experience, then it makes a lot of sense for us. Did you see the Steve Wozniak keynote yesterday? I missed it, unfortunately. He's one of the lines he said, you know, everything that he did was a first. First floppy disk. Mm -hmm. So you guys, sounds like you're doing a lot. Sounds something similar. You guys are doing something that's completely new? That's right. They, yeah, there's a tremendous amount of our technology that's never been done before, and so you learn a lot of stuff along the way. Um, so that's part of, you know, when you're asking about who do we try to hire, right? You need fast learners yeah, and yeah. guys who can, okay. you know, quickly prototype, do their experiments, and, and fix How, how many employees do you guys have? Uh, I think we're about 30 right now. Yeah, so it's still growing, yeah, brand new that, startup, that's, brand that's, new stealth that's, mode. That's about a 50% growth in the last, like, you know, six months to a year, right? Yeah, it's, it's coming up All quickly. Right. I mean, we've always got positions open. We'll keep so. an eye on them. Excellent. Hear that? You know, Certus is hiring. <laughs> and uh, so, so this is Stu Miniman with uh, John Furrier talking to Josh Goldstein of uh, Certus here at SNW. And up next, we're going to have Wayne Adams of uh, SNEA. All right. We're inside the cube. Okay. Thanks, Josh, for coming by. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks, John. All right. Stu, thanks, good thanks, job Stu. In, the, in, the, in the head seat there. Um, appreciate it. Okay. Yep. You can, you can right. leave. Thanks. Thanks. We'll bring in Wayne. Um, we'll talk behind your back uh, when you leave. Stu, what do you think about those guys? I mean, you know, I like that entrepreneurial startup. Yeah, culture. yeah. Certus definitely has a, yeah. a, a, some really interesting technology. There's a, kind of kind of this new. Gary Orenstein wrote a great post about a year ago talking about all of these cloud gateway technology companies out there. And that's the thing I'm looking for from this show is that you know, Waz said it. I want to see first. Well, where does innovation yeah. come from? We talked about. Is it come from the big companies or come from these little startups that have to be uh, acquired I, or I, replicated? I think from, this from is what we this have. is the kind of company we want to see in the queue, which is pushing the envelope, yeah. hiring, doing things for the first time. Yeah, these little 30-person, uh, yeah. you know, Silicon Valley with uh, some VCs. Lo VCs love that. Yeah. They love IP. Oh, we're doing something for the first time, you know, get the big money. $10 million is, you know, a good amount of funding.